On today's episode of Junkin' with Jenny, we open the door to new ideas on an old phone booth. How to give a vanilla bathroom a little more personality. Roasting hot Christmas lights come back for another season. What to do with a very confused fireplace and TV setup. Plus, Grandpa's motorbike tire spins again. All that and more on today's episode of Junkin' with Jenny. And here we are with uh, Junkin' with Jenny, Tony and Jenny Bruski joining you. This, of course, is the uh, show uh, all about uh, taking old objects, places, spaces, and uh, really giving them new life. Uh, if you've been uh, coming to follow the program, I believe we're up to episode 12 now. I think so. Yeah. And if you're listening to us, uh, it's really no different. But for us here today... We, uh, on the video version of this, which you can watch at junkinwithjenny.com, we are in your office. Yes. We've talked about your office mm -hmm. a lot. I love your office. I know. I think you secretly wish we could switch. Well, sometimes I just, I come in here and, and I just sit. I've caught you in here. And I sit at your desk mm -hmm. and I wear your clothes. No. And then I start calling myself Jenny. And then I ask the kids to call me mom. I haven't seen that, but <laughs> you do really enjoy my office. You really do. It is. I mean, it's very comfortable. And I thought, you know, we should really do this show uh, in here. Yeah. In this office, because it's really much more of your space and your stuff, and this is your show. So this, it, it, it just works. Mm -hmm. So I've been trying to figure out how to do it, because in the in the other office, uh, right over through that wall there, um, uh, that's where the studio is, and that's where we record our, our podcast and everything. Um, I was like, well, we there's no microphones in your office. So I did a little, little digging, a little research, and I found some nice little handy-dandy lavalier microphones that you can barely see. Yeah. And uh, so if hers, she has hers right there. So if I have to reach over in the middle of the show accidentally and move it. It's my mic. It's I'm not, not trying to be one of those people that. On the list. I don't want to be on the list. No. I'm just trying to adjust your microphone. Thank That's you. That's all. And I'll, I'll probably even cut to another photo. And then you can all of a sudden <laughs> we'll be keep like, it G-rated. Like, there won't Damn! be. Damn! And you'll be like, like, there's nothing going on here, folks. Nothing to see. Won't be any cop in a field, huh? Yeah, but uh, luckily we're married. So it's not, right. you're not like, you know, an intern or something like that where it's like completely, utterly inappropriate and insane. Let's um, move along. Yeah, let's move along. Okay. Uh, so there's lots of uh, interesting things to uh, talk about on today's episode. Um, as far as projects go uh, that, uh, that we've been working on, you got some interesting stuff. Uh, coming up on next week's episode, what do you, what do you think we're going to have on there next week for a, a a Jenny project? The concession area. Okay. I think that will be on there because we've already featured the homework room, mm -hmm. and that that is the last portion of the massive basement remodel that we took on. Um, that should be done, and then I might have a handful of small mm -hmm. things because I'm kind of wanting to. Take a break after doing that one because that, that was a sure. monster, almost almost two and a half month project. I think if it's up by the next episode, uh, the tall Christmas tree. Okay. And and just kind of explain some, kind of how you decorate that because it it goes be it looks like something out of uh, like Macy's Christmas department or something Thank or, you. or or Marshall Fields or something like a really nice department store back when okay. they used to put together really nice Christmas displays, not just the, you know, here's a bunch of ornaments. The art of putting together yeah. the tree. They're, okay. they're really nice ones. So we'll, we'll probably talk about that uh, if the tree is up uh, by then. I'm, I'm sure it'll be on a future episode. So you may be able to learn how to decorate a Christmas tree somewhere around Valentine's Day. <laughs> so uh, just, uh, just so you know, actually, no, we're actually pretty close to the, on this show from recording to airing. It's like almost like the next week. And Christmas trees are my thing. We put three up every year. Yeah. And I know that's a bit excessive, but I love decorating and they're all three different. We happen to live in a town that's obsessed with Christmas. Yeah. So um, we used to do the let's put the stuff up uh, the day after Thanksgiving. Right. Which was normal. Right. And I think that's where the rest mm -hmm. of the world that celebrates Christmas, yeah. that's their, you know, well, mm -hmm. I won't say the rest of the world because obviously Thanksgiving's not just a, it's an American holiday, mm -hmm. but... Around that time is when people start decorating for Christmas, unless you're a department store. But mm -hmm. in in Branson... Everyone's a department store. The day after Halloween, November 1st, boom, you're yeah. full-on Christmas season. If you don't 
have things decorated, then you're behind. And I know people are like, well, you know, you need to slow down and celebrate Thanksgiving. And we do. Mm -hmm. We just... Like, like to get the things up and decorated. Too. We just call it Christmas Part One. No, we of, don't do that. Instead of uh, Thanksgiving, it's really kind of interesting. So we took the kids trick or treating this year. Uh, we we take them to this outdoor shopping area. Uh, it's called the Landing, and they deck the thing out. They have a big Christmas parade down there, like the following day, and uh, it was already decked out with you know, garland and Christmas, you know, mm -hmm. ornaments and everything. And all the kids are, are trick-or-treating on Halloween, going up and down this thing. It was kind of like Nightmare on uh, Nightmare, nightmare on Christ, Before Christmas. Nightmare Before Christmas, yeah. But most of those kids don't know any different. That's, That's normal. it's always yeah. been for them. Sure. It's, I mean, our kids are like, awesome. We get twice as much Christmas season. Yeah, it's fun. Mm -hmm. So anyway, we'll talk about some of that stuff. We actually do have a Christmassy thing on today's episode uh, involving uh, Christmas uh, light bulbs, these old... Uh, fire hazards that uh, <laughs> we uh, a lot of us uh, had uh, my family did not my my aunts my uncles did but we'll get to that uh, in just a little bit also next week on the show uh, we have a wine sponsor uh, which is exciting it's awesome. like kind of a wine uh, uh, wine of the week if you will almost is kind of like what we're going to be doing I reached out cause we were talking about that the other week mm -hmm. saying you know we have wine on the show every week uh, you know Forty to 60,000 people download this show, I think we could probably get a couple bottles of wine <laughs> and then somebody could get some exposure yeah. for their wine. So uh, so we're going to, next week, uh, we have, I reached out to a couple vineyards this week and uh, we're going to start to get some of those on the air uh, next week. So we'll even talk about uh, some different wines and whatnot, not like do a crazy, hmm, I'm getting earthworm. How about you? Yeah, frog's ass. Mmm. That's kind of tastes like Oh, toad. Yeah. Toad, 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 toad toes. toes. Yes. On a spring day. We not, won't do that. Not quite like that. We'll just say if it's, you know, what we think of it, you know, mm -hmm. what it may, you know, you know, that, that. It'll be simple. It'll be simple, uh, but it'll be kind of a fun little. And it fits because I think projects go better when there's a little wine helping the whole process. Yeah, as long as you're not using power tools at that right. moment no, in time. Right, no, not using uh, power tools, but if you're painting something, it helps. Yeah, exactly. It, it really does. It, especially the next year, like, oh shit, I missed like all those spots. Paint is doable. It you is. Redo it, it no is. problem. It's not like, oh, I, I'm missing the finger. But that was a good bottle of wine. <laughs> Yeah. Can happen. All right, let's go to our first uh, letter uh, that came into us in the first uh, image. Like I said, junketwithjenny.com is where you can watch all of this, uh, where you can submit your questions, your pictures of objects, places, spaces you want uh, advice on, and we may use it on a future episode. Do it at junketwithjenny.com. First one we got here, this is, uh, and you can see it on the video at junketwithjenny.com, it's a uh, old phone booth door. This mm -hmm. is not the full phone booth. This is like the old, what you'd see probably like in a hotel entryway, uh, or I'm thinking almost you know, like train station as well, just the wood uh, door. This is not the metal type. The wood casing yeah. on it. Wood casing. And trim. Uh, phone booth. And it's, uh, it's pretty neat, uh, mm -hmm. but it's just the fold-in uh, style door, almost like a closet door. Got some glass on it. Oddly shaped. Um, I don't have the exact dimensions on it, uh, but I kind of estimated what I think it might be at, just you know, based on having seen them when they mm -hmm. were around. Um, what would you do with with something like this? Well, I know the first idea that I had, you also had, so I will let you share that one. But the second idea that I had, being that it's just the door and the casing, I thought I'd make a really neat wall light, like at the end of a hall. Okay. So I would kind of mm. build out maybe a three or four inch sure. box behind it and stain it to match the wood yeah. and put some sort of light source like a, a rope light maybe around the inside of that yeah. or a bar light at the bottom that shines up. Yeah, um, It looks like the glass is fogged, but if not, I would fog the glass. And so we've mm -hmm. talked about how to do that. Yeah, um, And I would wall mount it. I, I would imagine just that part is going to be a little heavy, 
so you want to mount it into studs, but I would think it'd make a really neat light at the end of a hull. That would be. That'd be a really cool light at the end of a hull. And you could even, uh, if you really wanted to, you could do the outline of a person in there that kind of gets fogged and it looks like there's somebody in there. Just freak out your family and then maybe even make it animated <laughs> a little bit so it moves and people think there's somebody in this fake phone booth. We would do that because we're creepy, mm -hmm. but normal people probably wouldn't do that. I think it'd be fun. <laughs> I think it'd be really fun. The idea I had for it, and again, it's really to depend on your space and what what you have and, and where you're wanting to put this. But I think you could frame it almost as like a, a pantry door. Frame it in. like Frame it in, in yeah. to be the entrance into a little pantry. Mm -hmm. Or even if it's not like a super big walk-in pantry, um, you may need to frame around it a little bit um, because it's probably a bit smaller than a regular door frame. Mm -hmm. But if you framed it correctly, I think you could make this into a neat little pantry uh, door uh, for, a, for a kitchen or if your pantry is down your hall or something. It'd be a neat little piece. I really like the light. You like the light? That's a really cool idea. I thought that would be fun. I was thinking about how we have in our house, we have some long mm -hmm. hallways and you know, we have overhead lights, but that would be kind of neat at the end of the hall as a nightlight. Yeah. That would be really cool. <laughs> That's neat. Until you discover it's haunted and then you start hearing people's phone conversations through, uh, that are, are attached to the door. And you never door. know. You do. You I would hope door. not. But be fun. Be creepy. <laughs> so there you go. There's uh, an idea for what to uh, to do with the old uh, old phone booth. I like that a lot. And I just, I, it's funny because you know, some of the stuff we get on the show we talk about, I go, damn, I really wish I could find that myself. Yeah. You know, to actually do some of this stuff with. That would be a cool thing. We'd have to change the name of the show to Hoarding with Jenny. So Next year. <laughs> new, no. ep new New whole like a spinoff episode. Our, our garage is, is kind of hoardish. No. Our garage <laughs> is projects and planning. And it's you can you can park vehicles in there. You can. If there's when a hailstorm coming. Yeah, we can move stuff mm -hmm. around a little bit. Move the, the cat bodies around and... It's not like I've just gathered these items with no intent on what to do. I have a, a plan. I see you making that face. Oh. I have a plan for all the mantles and the windmill tail and everything else that's out there. Jenny, the only way we're going to be able to get through <laughs> this is if you can admit that there's a problem. There's not a problem and there's no 12-step program for that. So <laughs> I'm trying to be the hoarder people. Are they coming and they're like... It's not that bad. You can park two full-size vehicles in it. You can. You really can. Seriously, it's not hoarder. It's not. It's not you can. Hoarder. It's not hoarderish. And we think there's stuff along the walls, but it's all stuff we're planning on using. So. Yeah. Um, okay, moving on. Uh, this next object we have here. Take a look. It's pulleys. Awesome. Who doesn't love themselves some pulleys? I love pulleys. I think they're neat. They're rusty and... Uh, uh, you know, it, it, I wonder what were they used in? I think like barns and stuff like that. Maybe, um, maybe, maybe a, a warehouse. Meat, a, a meat locker? No. Probably had large animal carcasses hanging we're out We're not them. going to one time put or that another. thought out there. It's kind of pull it and... That may be partially true, but I'm going to say they were probably a warehouse or a barn. Sure. Meat warehouse. If it's bloody, just International House of by. Meat. Well, hopefully it was just, you know, steaks that were on there and it wasn't okay. like some bad part of a major city. Uh, what would you do with them, Jenny? I actually really like industrial looking objects and mm -hmm. I like the whole industrial feel. Probably even before it was kind of a thing and I'll probably like it long after it's not a trend anymore. But I would take these and I would have um, some of the pendant lights that you can get at you know, your big box store, and mm -hmm. I would take the cord and maybe wrap it around once and have just an Edison bulb hanging from each of these and have the pulleys affixed to the ceiling so mm -hmm. it looks like there's lights off, hanging off of the pulleys and, and make a light fixture out of it that way. Was that your idea? Yeah, that was what I was going to say, too. Sorry. Because I've seen that done oh, on, you have? on Pinterest okay. where they have... Just you know, the long and they're thicker cords. They're 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 modern. They're safe cords. They're safe, but they're they usually the rope wrapped yeah. looking ones. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I really like that, and I think that'd be mm -hmm. a perfect thing to tie into with these pulleys. Um, I'd probably do something where the thought I had would be uh, for this light fixture have a beam of some sort that they're attached to. Um, then you can it'll make it a little easier too with all the the cords are eventually going to go into some. And source. then you have one source of power. Yeah. And then you kind of wrap all the the cords up in there, you know, safely, uh, and and then you have these pulleys uh, 
uh, hanging from the beam on hooks, um, and then you know your lights and, and probably Edison bulbs and such hanging down from it. So, very similar idea. Any other ideas on them? Um, drying jerky in the, uh, <laughs> the garage. Um, no, I don't. I that was really what I, I was thinking of doing with it. I, I honestly don't have many other ideas on it. You? Yes. Okay. Um, for if you have like a larger piece of artwork or a family photo or even an old empty window, mm -hmm. I would attach um, either chain or rope to both ends of the top of the picture or the window or whatever you want to hang and then let the pulley be basically the center of where it's hanging from and you attach the pulley to the wall so this picture or whatever it is is hanging from the pulley okay and the the rope goes up from one side to the pulley and then down to the other oh i see what you're saying mm -hmm. that could be neat mm -hmm. i was going to say christmas ornaments but they probably pull your tree over you need one heck of a tree that would be kind of crazy <laughs> Yeah. If you had like a giant outdoor tree and you had a ton of these things, although it would probably look to be a very creepy tree, like what are all these large yeah. rusty objects with hooks on But for this tree? But do you get what I'm saying about the whole hanging picture? I do, yeah. yeah. I don't know. It's kind of hard to describe. And I know that everybody that's listening to us is like, what is she talking about? They're just so large. What type of, what type of pictures would you be hanging from this? I would hang something like my, my window there. Okay, so big things. Or even my clock back here. You know, somehow hang something large. You know, okay. it can even be empty picture frames because sometimes mm -hmm. the old ornate picture frames from, you know, mm -hmm. turn of the century a hundred years ago are pretty neat just by themselves sure. and you could just hang that just empty. Would it sway back and forth though? You can affix it to the wall to where it doesn't do that okay. but it looks like it's suspended I from see. the pulley. I see what you're saying. Double sided tape goes a long way at making things stay where they're supposed to. I it do does. That a lot. It does. All right. I like it. Pulleys. Mm -hmm. There you go. Okay. Uh, next item here. This is not an item. This is actually a space. And let me make sure I'm pulling up the right one. Yeah, here we go. Bathroom. Remodel is the question here. I should preface this letter by saying there's nothing wrong technically with my bathroom. It's very much how it looked when we moved into the house four years ago. I, however, do think it's time for an update of some sort. I spent a lot of time in this room and would like it to feel a bit more relaxing. I don't know if spa-like is something I can pull off, but I'm willing to hear ideas for something I can try. What ideas do you have for fixing up this bathroom. Well, I think spa-like is definitely doable. It's okay. a nice large bathroom. First thing to do would be to get the carpet out of there because carpets and bathrooms don't mix. But I, it feels so good on your feet when you come out of the shower and you yeah. can drip dry right into the carpet. Yeah. And it gets into the pad. It gets into the pad. And you get that distinct smell in that bathroom. Things that don't necessarily make it first try into the toilet. You can get that into there. It all it creates a unique scent to a room. So I would get the carpet out of there. Okay. Um, the large mirror, that's kind of a catch-22. Some people love their large mirrors, and mm -hmm. I, I can't fault them for that, but I really like the look of two individual mirrors because it looks like there's two vanities, even though one of the vanities doesn't have mm -hmm. a, a faucet, but it has the look of having two separate vanities. Sure. So I would treat it as two separate vanities. Okay. Um, and, you know, I can't tell what the countertop is. If it's laminate, I would take it out and maybe replace it with something, you know, you can get a stone countertop for a vanity with a sink already mounted into it. Real easy from a big box store. Mm -hmm. But I would take that middle kind of bridge piece out. Mm -hmm. And for storage, I would maybe look for an antique piece of furniture of some sort, like an antique dresser or buffet piece. So would and you make these into like two separate vanities essentially? Yes. Okay. I would make it into two separate spaces and I would put some kind of unique piece um, there in the middle to kind of break it up. Okay. And definitely it's the old bar lighting with just the bulbs screwed in. Mm -hmm. I would work on having uh, two separate fixtures put in above each mirror respectively. Mm -hmm. And you know your mirrors don't have to be anything special. You can get a framed mirror pretty inexpensive but it just gives it a you know I guess a, a step up it, it just mm -hmm. looks better 
I uh, can't see what's going on with the rest of the bathroom to know what to do with the tub or the shower of any mm -hmm. of that. But painting the walls, I would go with some sort of relaxing color and the maybe blues or greens mm -hmm. um, kind of feel just because that seems to work spa-like and, and it goes great with white. Sure. I, I think one of the, the quickest and easiest things you can do to give the room a, a whole new feel is get rid of that mirror. Mm -hmm. And again, it's one of those things where if that's what you've had your whole life, that's what I had growing up. Was giant, I didn't know that you didn't have giant mirrors in a bathroom. I thought that's just all you did. That's what everybody did. That's what I thought the, the only options were. Um, but yeah, you get that giant mirror out of there. Um, I like the idea of kind of separating it out into two different mm -hmm. vanity pieces. Um, if you really are dead set on keeping your giant mirror there, I kind of maybe do a bar or something along the top, frame it a little bit, make it kind of feel more... Uh, like a piece, uh, not just a giant piece of mirror that was hung to the wall uh, out of obligation. Um, but if you can get two, you know, cool little, you know, identical matching mirror pieces, which you can get at almost any home store these days for a reasonable price, switch out the light fixture. If you can, if it's not too crazy to wire uh, uh, it over a little bit, I would do it. If not, you could probably get away with uh, a nice longer bar piece there mm -hmm. of some sort. Um, it doesn't have to be a, a bar per se, but something that has you know separate bulbs in it. Um, and there's, sure. there's all sorts of designs you can take a look at. But I'd certainly upgrade from that uh, kind of uh, basically uh, basic one that probably came with the house that we see there. Um, and uh, yeah, then painting it. I'd probably go with you know the. Uh, what is this? What would you call? What is this? This one is Silver Strand by Sherwin Williams. Okay, so. And I don't know how blue it mm -hmm. looks in the video, but sure. it, it's a gray blue. Mm -hmm. It's a lot like sea salt. More people are probably familiar with that color because it's been all over HGTV for the last two years. Sure. So something probably along mm -hmm. those lines. Um, a relaxing uh, color for the bathroom there. Uh, get rid of that kind of yellowish. I don't, it, may, it may not even be yellow. It may just be how the lights are making it's it It's probably look. a beige that yeah. makes it look yellow. Sure. And uh, carpet, I would keep the carpet just because I love the scent that it gives a bathroom. It's okay. it's like it's like uh, human potpourri. So no, I get rid of it. I, I know I, I would get rid of it. And, and what would you put down? Because I didn't say what I'd put down, and I just thought about that. Um, you know, if you if you have the budget for it, I'd look at uh, probably they, they have now the waterproof uh, wooden. Uh, tile type pieces, correct? They the, are you talking about the like engineered plank? Yeah, or? engineered plank yes. that is waterproof. So that could be an option. Uh, if you don't want to go down that route, uh, I would probably consider like a wood looking actual porcelain, porcelain tile. tile. Mm -hmm. uh, another not half bad option uh, for a bathroom uh, it would really be a stained concrete. Um, which yes. you, you, depending on how much you have to spend here on this and what your experience level is, you could do it yourself. It's not going to look like super shiny and super amazing unless you actually pour the other new layer of a different type of concrete on top of it, which not, I don't think, insanely complex. I've never done it myself. I've seen it done, um, but you would need to put a, a special layer of concrete down. And who knows, depending on this is upstairs, downstairs, or what's you know there, uh, you may uh, it may not even be an option. Can you do concrete onto like the subfloor? I mean, you probably no. need to do something. I wouldn't recommend it because yeah. you're just asking for it to crack and everything. If you're in a, if this is already a basement. If it's a basement, and if it's already then on sure. a concrete slab, I'd say that could be an option. But again, if not, no. You're not going to want to go with the super glossy because yeah. it is going to get wet and it's going to be. For slippery. whatever reason, I was just in the, under the impression it was in a basement. I don't know why, and it probably isn't. But I, at first, I actually thought the carpet was stained concrete. I thought, oh. I thought, oh, this is uh, that you know kind of cloudy looking. But mm -hmm. then I look at closer; it's, it's carpet. There's vacuum marks. Yeah, yeah. But I, I, if you have the option, I think stained concrete could be a neat option in there. But I agree. The biggest thing you can do is get rid of that builder's mirror. Builders did that for decades, and it, it was twofold. One, the big mirrors like that mm -hmm. were fairly cheap for them to come by. But then also, it reflects more light, giving the room a bigger feel. Yeah. Bathrooms are bathrooms, you know, you don't, you can't fake more space that bad sure. in, in a bathroom. So I would go with the the upgrade on the two separate mirrors. I never like the argument uh, to people where, oh, it makes the room seem so much bigger. Yeah, to the dog. 
Right. <laughs> like, the, like, I realize the room's not that much bigger. No. You know, I, I get it can kind of create the illusion, but there's very... Colors can do that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, things like that can really do it. I, I don't really ever go with that uh, or agree with that set sentiment when it's a mirror. Well, <laughs> it's, it's, like, oh. it's not that the room's feeling bigger it's sure. reflecting light which oh, lighter light paint will will make it feel bigger but it's just that that's the argument you hear you, some people make sometimes right, in the mirror right it's like oh yeah and who are those people in there yeah it's like the it's cat reflection. probably thinks mm -hmm. it's a larger room now <laughs> like i'm glad the cat's happy um so yeah there you go I, I think there's you know not a ton of things that need to be changed there in fact it's a lot of kind of taking out and mm -hmm. a couple of rearrangements that could probably be done fairly economically so there you go, bathroom remodel. If you have a uh, place, uh, object, space, something you want uh, some feedback on, go ahead and submit it to us at junkinwithjenny.com and it's, it's right there, see? I'm pointing at it right now. You're really obsessed with pointing to stuff on camera. You would have been the dorkiest weatherman ever. I would have been ever. a horrible weatherman because I'm no matter how many times I do it, I'm always in the wrong direction and I, I have no no sense of these things it's, okay. it's horrible um let's do this one this is christmas lights okay. uh, and these are the old uh you touch them when they're plugged in you're going to char the flesh off of your hand christmas lights uh it says i've been holding on to this box of antique christmas lights for nearly 25 years these are the lights that used to go on our tree it's amazing it didn't burn the house down i wouldn't dream of plugging them in anymore as they burn ridiculously hot and most of them no longer work i just can't find it in my heart to get rid of them as they hold a lot of childhood memories of the holidays is there some way of incorporating them into my holiday decor today. So there you go. My aunt had these, mm -hmm. lived next door. She'd babysit for me. This is the one who pushed me off the tire swing. So there's a lot of traumatic memories with Aunt Jean. It was an accident. It wasn't like she did it on purpose. Bullshit. Um, but uh, I, I was swinging on the tire swing and she pushed real hard and I fell. And then I proceeded to try and poison her with soap water when we got back into the house. I did, here, have a sip, have a sip. And it was, uh, I literally mixed some, like a bar of ivory. So the water was like, it looked like milk. Like, this isn't water, Tony. No, yes it is, drink it. it like seven, That's gross. eight. Uh, anyway, uh, she had these, um, uh, these lights on her tree. And, you know, it, it, I will say it does, it does make the tree nice and toasty. I think it probably brings out the oils in the pine <laughs> and you can, you can smell the tree even more in the house. And these did, if you remember them, they, they did look really nice on trees. They were really mm -hmm. retro Christmas, but then they started, you know, getting too hot and burning homes down. Um, so they have like a, a safe version of these now. Yeah. Um, so if you don't have an old version of these, um, you could probably apply our ideas and what we're talking about to the newer versions. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, even consider plugging them in maybe. Uh, it just depends what you're putting on them what we're, with what we're about to, uh, to talk about. But uh, so you got these things, they can unscrew what would you do with them to uh, to be able to use them in some sort of holiday decor? Uh, I have a few ideas. Okay. One's very not out of the box at all. Um, it's basically unscrewing all the bulbs from the strand and mm -hmm. throw the strand away. You don't want to even have that around. Um, and then wrapping wire around where they would have plugged in or okay. screwed into the, the string of lights and just hang them as ornaments on the tree, even though they're not illuminated. Mm -hmm. That was one. Um, the other one was using the bulbs just as part of a centerpiece display. Mm -hmm. And you know you can work them into the greenery, you can wrap floral wire and um, some of the, the greenery picks on there and poke them into arrangements if you want so they mm -hmm. pop out. Um, the last one, and I'm not real sure how to execute it, but if I had a bulb to play with, I would figure it out. I would somehow find a way to make them a placeholder name card for like a formal Christmas dinner. So like there's a bulb at each plate oh, sure. that has the name of who's supposed to sit there. Okay. On some sort of card or something, and I haven't really figured out how to attach it, but I would figure something out. You could also maybe even just use them as part of the decorations around the table. Mm -hmm. uh, just as, like, on the table. The centerpiece. Mm -hmm. You know, people put, you know, little, you know, candles and sure. things like that out. You could do it with the Christmas lights. Um, what I would do with them, one of the ideas that, uh, that I had was 
if you don't, because some of these, they do, some of them are very faded. Mm -hmm. And so they're not necessarily the sharp colors that they used to be when they're off. Um, so I'd consider getting some of that like Rust-Oleum, like silver paint. Um, or, you know, looks not necessarily silver, but the aluminum or the, the metal, metallic, silver metallic is okay. what I'm saying. Not just like silver. Like the mercury glass? Yeah. Okay. Uh, mercury glass or just like metallic, okay. like just metal mm -hmm. uh, paint. Um, and then spraying these things uh, really well. Um, and then possibly even like adding, and, and I'm so like not a glitter person for anything because we have two little girls and when there's glitter of any sort it will be in this house for months on everything um but uh, i would use it in this uh case a little bit uh to kind of make them sparkle a little mm -hmm. bit to sprinkle a little bit on top of it once you right after you paint it so it sticks um and then i would uh, attach them with a string or I did think possibly you could use this cord again for that, you know, cut your power end off of it so nobody gets the bright idea of plugging, plugging them in. it in. Um, but if you sprayed the cord as well, you could uh, maintain that color, but the cord is pretty bulky. I think what I ideally could be done is just a nice string of some sort, a good heavy duty string. Um, possibly even like a metal type string that's fairly thin. Like a wire. Like a wire of some sort. Um, and, and using that like a, uh, like a wire you'd use for like hanging pictures, like a, okay. a thin picture hanging wire. And then wrapping the the plug part uh, with the uh, the wire and then making it kind of like a strand of mm -hmm. them and hanging it uh, over, uh, you know, underneath a piece of garland on a, a fireplace uh, or you could put it in a wreath, something of that nature. Uh, that could be a fun way to reuse them. Or, or just like I said earlier, uh, and that was going to be my second idea, was using it just as, as little accent pieces here mm -hmm. and there a little bowl filled with the the christmas lights i think i would accent them somehow like i just said with the the painting of some sort um and then just setting them around the house as a decoration and you see them like you remember oh these were our christmas lights when i was a kid yeah so it'd be kind of a fun thing to do it's it, it's a shame we can't really do that with the little plastic ones that we had because there's, no. it's like oh these are just junk <laughs> but these big ones they they were fun they were fun so did you ever have the ones um that uh that like bubbled up there was like they were like a round base it looked almost like a genie type. no you know what i'm talking about i know what you're talking about no i never had those uh. i only had the like 1983 version of those that mm -hmm. you know they didn't have the 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 texture to them they were just the round bulbs they still got hot yeah but they weren't like that yeah the remember the the little, but my Aunt Holly had those and they would always, like, those are neat. You know? <laughs> it's like you always want somebody else's holiday decorations. I was always trying to convince my mom to put the, uh, the light, uh, the extra light that they always give you on the strand that then makes the strand uh, blink or, or mm -hmm. whatnot. That's how you used to have to do it. I don't know if that's how it works anymore. I think a lot of them now, it's like a switch you press or it's something. It's a switch or remote. Yeah, but it used to be you had to put the special bulb in, and then that triggered. Mm -hmm. I think it basically shorted out the lights a bit to make them I don't know blink about or that. whatever, how were they were supposed to work. Um, but uh, back in the day where one bulb went out, you're screwed, the whole thing goes out. So there you go. There's some ideas for reusing uh, some holiday lights. Got our next object here, and this is a uh, old bike wheel. This is actually an old motor bike wheel. You're on my cord. Am I on your cord? You're Oops, on I'm cord. on your cord. There. So, okay. Okay. And your 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 uh, your thing is uh, there. You go. There we go. Okay. okay. A motor. They can't see any of this because the motor bike wheel is on camera. That's probably the best. So okay. You know. Okay. Ooh. What are you doing, Jenny? Shut up. <laughs> just read. I could say anything right now, and it's just being in front. Uh, bike wheel. Uh, the letter says, I'm not a bike collector or a wheel collector of any sort, however. This has been adorning the wall of my garage for several years now. I believe this belonged to a motorbike that my grandfather used. Kind of an odd piece. I'm not sure. I'm sure a collector of some sort would enjoy it, but I'm not looking to sell it. I'd rather find a way to incorporate it into my home as some sort of decoration or art piece. Any ideas on what to do yeah. with the wheel? I've actually been looking for one of these. I saw an old bicycle wheel that I had this idea for, mm -hmm. but I, I was too late when I went back and decided to get it. It was gone. But I would take the tire off of it first and I would spray paint the entire metal and the spokes and everything. I mm -hmm. would maybe paint all of it black. 
Um, the next thing I would do was take some sort of maybe like a small dish, like a uh, saucer or something like that, and take you know four, maybe five of them, and super glue them to the rim to where they're face up. And I would hang it and make it a candelier, which is a chandelier that ah. uses battery-powered candles. Sure. And uh, I would suspend it from a chain. I was looking to do that for our deck area outside, but I never found okay. one. But I'm sure I'll find several now. But sure. you can put as many or as few of lights on there as you want. I like that. What were you going to do with that? I make it a wreath and then put the Christmas lights on it from the former, from the last uh, thing you just talked about. But no, seriously, um, I, I did, uh, I was looking at some ideas on the Pinterest, and uh, one of the things I saw was kind of a, a neat wheel mm -hmm. idea. Um, and it's not that I would even really paint it much. Um, I think I would probably leave it as is, and I'd probably add in, uh, you know, some of the, literally not the whole thing as a wreath, but just a little bit at the very bottom of the wheel. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, kind of like a, almost like not supposed to be a smiley face, but you know, like about sure. a smiley face sure. amount of uh, garland to that. Um, and then um, add, you know, some other rustic type, you know, ornaments to it. Um, and, and it just happens that the, the things we talked about last, those uh, old lights, I think would be a good thing that, that would, would be cool fit on there. there. Um, and it could be a fun outside, you know, maybe a, if you have a, a shed or a barn or something. Um, I don't know that it would fit well in a front door, but if you have like an outdoor living space or something, a patio space that you don't get much use of uh, in winter, but you want it to look other, you know, nice, Festive. other than just depressing mm -hmm. because you can't be out there. <laughs> right. Um, you might as well decorate it up a little bit. Um, I think that could be a good thing for that sort of mm -hmm. a space. I do like the uh, the chandelier idea, the the candelier. Candelier, yeah. yeah. Thank so, you. There you go. Any other ideas on the uh, on the bike wheel? Not right off the bat, no. So. There you go. I like that. And I'll have to go find a wheel. Uh, <laughs> next uh, thing we have here is uh, a, a space. This is uh, some help with a fireplace. Letter says, Jenny, I know you're good at fireplaces, so please help me with this one. I like to call it my bastardized fireplace. Uh, entertainment center, uh, my bastardized fireplace entertainment center. Uh, it's uh, literally hanging. Uh, uh, on the uh, and uh, and installed, uh, I'm trying to read this correctly. The entertainment center is literally hanging on and installed uh, with cords everywhere, right over the mantle. Uh, it's very very difficult to actually see the fireplace itself. I think there's potential with the bricks, but I'm open to any ideas you may have on this fireplace. I agree. There's potential with the bricks. Um, I would take off the entertainment center portion mm -hmm. that's attached to the mantle. Um, and and before we, we jump into it, we should really just describe this okay. for our listeners so they have a better idea what we're talking about here. You have a, a bricked fireplace where there's almost two columns of bricks going up on each side to the ceiling point. Um, and then it looks like the hearth is, is bricked around and then you have your fireplace insert and then there's looks like it's drywall kind of in the middle area where you could potentially hang something, a, a television in mm -hmm. theory, a piece of art, whatever, uh, but it's almost like there's a big, it's like a U inlet, if you will, of, sure. of drywall there. But it's covered right now with a, a giant oversized TV that's really just too big for the space. It is. Um, and then the rest of the room... Uh, we won't even need to talk about that. The focus here is on the, the fireplace itself. Um, so that's what we're looking at. That's what we're dealing with. Go ahead. Can you make it bigger for me to see again? Yes. Okay. I um, I agree. I think one of the first things to do it'd be, would be to maybe relocate that TV to a different area because it is too big for the fireplace. And I would find something that fits within that drywalled area. Mm-hmm. And I would go ahead and look at having an, having an electrician run power possibly from the ceiling down to that area because I know going around the brick is going to be tricky. But I would think through ceiling they could access that and put a power source in behind where you would wall mount that new TV. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I know that that may not be something that's feasible, buying a new TV and hiring an electrician, but we're looking at what you know big picture goal could be. Basically, if you want it 
fixed and better than this, you have to get rid of that television. There's, yeah. there's no way that this space is going to look remotely right, which is kind of, I think, what they're going at mm -hmm. with that television there. It is simply not designed for a TV of that size, nor to have... I don't even think it's wall mounted. It almost looks like they they have kind of an entertainment center mounted to the brick, right. uh, if you will, um, that it's it's resting upon. So get that that whole monstrosity out of there. That's your biggest problem. Mm -hmm. Is is that? Um, and I understand like maybe there's not another place to put the TV. Well, you're going to have to find one. I mean, I, you have a lot of open window spaces here in this room. I see. I would say put the TV out in front of that other window over that, sure. that's directly in front of the couch there. That should give you, you know, you still have plenty of room to look out your windows. Um, that's not going away. Um, and then it's not such an eyesore uh, above the fireplace. I almost feel like they may have put it there feeling like obligated, like everybody's hanging their TVs above their fireplace. Let's do it. You know, and, sure, and then realized, oh God. This isn't the, the best way to execute that, especially no. if you're going to use that fireplace because the heat's yeah. going to rise right up onto everything. Yeah. So you need more space there. Um, yeah. So, okay, let's, let's pretend that that's doable. TV's gone. TV's not there or they're going to get a smaller one to wall mount. Sure. Um, I love plank walls. We all know I love shiplap. Mm -hmm. um, I would do some sort of, you know texture wall treatment to the sheetrock there between the column posts. I would probably just go ahead and shiplap that mm -hmm. or plank it from the whole, you know, from the ceiling down to where it stops. Sure. Um, and that'll also help with support on where you put your, your wall mount for your TV. Mm -hmm. I cannot tell what their mantle looks like. Um, so I would say, depending on what the mantle looks like, it may be usable or it may be, a, a lot of times I find mantles are underwhelming for the fireplace. Yeah. So I would consider possibly making a beamed mm -hmm. and it's just a simple, you, <laughs> I say that and we're going to do a show on beams, but I would consider making a box beam mantle. Mm -hmm. Or you can buy a, a mantle secondhand, something that's going to be size appropriate for this fireplace. Sure. For the brick itself, I would, you know, depending on their decor, and I can't tell just how orange the brick is because pictures are deceiving. If it's not too bad and it's red and you can get away with leaving it, I would probably leave it and just let that be kind of an accent for the rest of the room. Mm -hmm. If it's kind of overwhelming, I would consider either whitewashing it or painting it flat out. Um, but I like brick. I like the texture that brick adds. So mm -hmm. I think it's definitely salvageable. Um, but you're right, that TV just hides too much of it. You're gonna have a whole blank canvas to work with if that TV is gone. Mm -hmm. Or you may just discover, hey, we like this as is. Um, because that that's the eyesore is, sure. is the TV entertainment center thing there. Um, and, and, and you could, I like the shiplap idea uh, of doing that in the, uh, the inlet there in the U-shape area. Um, or if you don't want to, um, you could probably just keep the drywall the way it is um, and find a little, you know, neat piece of art or something or a mm -hmm. clock or, or something that, that fits the rest of the decor of your home. There's, you know, like we said, there's a gazillion home stores now that have oh, yeah. a clock aisle, you know, and you're guaranteed to find a clock that fits with whatever your style is. And you can make that, you know, mm -hmm. the fact that it's not all brick, yeah. you know, if you don't want to plank it or shiplap it, you can really downplay that by painting it the same color or whitewashing it to match the brick so that mm -hmm. it just all kind of blends and it feels like it's one cohesive piece instead of kind of the chopped up look that it is right now. Yeah. Um, and that will just really pull the whole thing together as far as making it look like it's one unit. Yeah, I, I completely agree. Good luck. Yeah. I, I think it really, it, it, it looks like a lot of work, but I think really a few steps here, rearranging a few things there, I think you're gonna have a, a very different feel to that room. It's a weekend project. It's yeah. totally doable. And it's one of those things you can't screw it up. But mm -hmm. worse comes to worse, there's paint. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> so. exactly. Or sledgehammers. You know, that's... Uh... No, no. <laughs> there you go. Thank you for submitting that one. If you have a uh, space, place, object uh, you want advice on uh, and some insight into, send it to us, junkinwithjenny.com. Uh, okay, this is our last item, I believe. And... There it is. Okay, this, look at this lovely object. This is an old 
water fountain. Letter says, this is a water fountain that I rescued out of my elementary school as they were tearing it down. Not exactly something I can get back into working order, but still a neat piece. Thoughts on what can be done to give it a second shot at life. And this is one of those very old, it almost looks like a bird bath water it fountain. Does. You know, but they were bigger and thicker and you press the thing and it kind of comes out of the top. Um, but it, it's, it's, you know, a 1940s, 1950s mm -hmm. uh, water fountain, or as we call them in the north, a bubbler. <laughs> yeah, that still yeah. sounds weird to me. Yeah, so we, I don't know. And I, I, New England also calls them bubblers. Yeah. I don't know why, like Wisconsin does, and New England, I don't know. Okay. Anyhow, so what would you do with the water fountain? Well, I know that, there, I'm going to say there's probably not a whole lot you can do. You need to kind of preserve it in one piece, because mm -hmm. I doubt that it comes apart to no. use the base as one thing and sure. the, the bowl as another. So I would preserve it as one piece. I would try and work around, if not, if you can't remove the part that sticks up in the middle where the you would- The bubbler act, part? Where you would drink from. Sure. If you can't take that out, I would just try and use it as a planter. I would honestly put it in my office with a plant in it that kind of grows over. So it's almost mm -hmm. like a bowl on a stand. Sure. Um, you know, another thing you mentioned, it looks like a bird bath. And I kind of thought about that mm -hmm. in a garden, you know, but I'm not real sure what you would put on top to hold the water for the bird bath because yeah. it's going to drain. It might be kind of deep for a bird bath. The birds are yeah. going to think it's like a bird bath and they're going to discover they're like going into a, like a 10 foot pool for yeah. a bird and it's like and they're gonna die. diving board. You find dead birds in your bird bath. It'll have ducks in it. So. That, that, yeah. Yeah. That could be interesting. How big are those? I've never seen one in real life. One of these? Yes. Uh, about half the size of a bird bath in circumference. Okay. So it's it's so about a foot across then maybe. Yeah, right around there. Okay. Um, I mean, there there are different types that were out, but um, I think I like the idea of of doing plants in there, but I would I would actually you know pack the dirt into this thing. Yeah. Use it as almost like a uh, little herb garden or something mm -hmm. you could put in your house, like in the kitchen by a window or something. Um, and, and use it like that. And then also try and discover where the, uh, the water does come out at, because you have to water these <laughs> things from now yeah. at, time and time again. Um, and if the soil just soaks it all up, great. Um, but you may uh, find that it does kind of start coming up the drain. Um, so, so be aware of that. Uh, or if you can, you know, put some sort of filler in there, you may be able to use some like, uh, get down deep in there and do some spray foam. To, and, and to seal it up seal it sure. and then put your dirt in and then uh do your uh garden um that could be a kind of a neat option for repurposing this um you can make an interesting uh like side table if you can't get that uh the water spigot part out of it i would say uh, you know either do like probably a glass top because a wood top or anything solid would cover up the piece itself and mm -hmm. you'd really kind of lose what it is it just becomes a stand um but if you're going to do a glass piece you know, talk to someone who could cut a hole in the glass in the center that you could basically kind of like how you, you put an umbrella through a, a patio sure. piece um, and then use that as your top and you can make it an interesting side table. It, it, it is a piece that does kind of limit you with what you can and can't do with it. And I hate saying, oh, put a plant in it because mm -hmm. that's an easy go-to. Put I a would, bird on it. I would actually do that though if I had one. Sure. Like, that's how I would use it. Um, because I think it's just kind of neat, some of the enamels chipping off of it, and you can mm -hmm. see the cast iron underneath. It's like an old bathtub, almost. Yeah. You know, how they get kind of roached out. And it's about as heavy as a bathtub. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing. It looks tiny, and these were not super large things, but yeah, they're, I believe, I think they are like cast iron. Yeah. So they don't make them like that anymore. No, they sure don't. <laughs> We're never going to get on, on this show somebody going, "Hey, I, I found this uh, water fountain. It's like you know the big giant one. You you know you press it you in. You never know. Don't say never. Because... I, I don't know what you would do with that though. Like the more modern version of it that we've had in our lifetime. You know? I don't know on the spot, but I I would find something to do with it. It would be an interesting mm -hmm. interesting object to try and repurpose. It just, it seems like some of these old things they had so much art to them and the more modern don't they're just kind of right. boxes with a button you know right and these you know there's a reason you can repurpose this or people would want to repurpose and it. that's why i love old things because yeah. even though it was necessary it was made beautifully it was it was there's a lot of neat uh neat possibilities there 
with uh, with that water fountain. So there you go. There you go. That's our stuff. Okay. That's our uh, our letters for the week. Got lots of neat stuff lined up for next week's show. So if you have something you'd like on there, want us to talk about, want us to give you some insight on, go ahead and send it in to us at junkinwithjenny.com. Uh, excited. Next week, we got a wine sponsor. So we're going to attempt to consume five bottles of wine between the two of us no. in one hour. Not possible. Wait till the last 10 minutes of that show. That's going to be stuff. Not possible. That uh, you're going to really enjoy. I couldn't even do that shit in college. On a very special Junkin' with Jenny. Ugh. Puking with Jenny. <laughs> the dangers of drinking too much wine. Right. All right, that wraps up the program for today. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, check out junkingwithjenny.com. Be sure to press subscribe uh, wherever you are listening to us or watching us as well. It helps us grow this thing. Until next time, for Jenny Bruski, who's right there. I know I know where to point. Do I have to point at you? No. Okay. Because I'm closing it up. So there you go. Okay. Uh, I'm Tony Bruski. Thanks for watching <laughs> Junkin' with Jenny.